Uh, all right, I'm Ruland Van Dyke from Keysight Technologies. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, using off-the-shelf parts for uh, 5G, uh, RF design, and uh, IoT applications. So what are some of the benefits of doing this? Right, You want to be able to uh, get to market quickly uh, and do some type of rapid prototyping. Part of the problems are associated with uh, being able to get uh, models, perhaps, uh, and then iter uh, hardware iterations and prototypes. And it can be very costly and time consuming to go through all these changes, but if you can use off-the-shelf parts and uh, be able to do some of the impedance matching automatically, you can save a lot of time. So, as we look at 5G, and we look at some of the requirements for 5G, well, you know, what are some of the things that they're targeting? They're targeting enhanced 4G, and then uh, some of the uh, emerging technologies would be uh, video, 4K video, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, of course, safety, public safety, uh, Internet of Things, uh, lots of different applications that, that's been targeted. What I've listed here is a few of the proposed RF bands uh, for 5G. And so these are emerging standards at this particular point in time. So here's a little 5G system that we built uh, with off-the-shelf parts. And it's, this works at 28 gigahertz. This is a receiver. We've got a front end. Uh, the bandwidth is 3 gigahertz wide. Uh, then what we've done is we down convert to a 6 gigahertz IF. We just use a low pass filter there to, to uh, filter that. Uh, and then we run through a second conversion and then we have a, a, a gigahertz at the output. What you should notice in this slide is uh, the green boxes are uh, S parameters and X parameters. And so if you're not familiar with X parameters, they're really just an ex a nonlinear extension of S parameters. So you can look at harmonics uh, from a, a particular circuit. One of the things that we have in introduced earlier this year was cis parameters. And so cis parameters are bias, uh, frequency, and temperature dependent parameters. But these are system parameters like P1dB, gain, noise figure, so you can have this data in a CSV file or Excel and you can actually use that directly in the file and you can get these dependencies. We have libraries actually uh, of these particular types of models. So what I want to show you here is actually the hardware and I have a, a picture of the hardware here or I have the, the real hardware that we used. Um, this system here is uh, similar to the one that, uh, or it's a replica of the, the schematic that I just showed. There's two output connectors there on the upper left. The, the lower one is the RF input at 28 gigahertz. Uh, we've got the shields off so you can actually see what's in the components or what's in the, uh, uh, the hardware itself. We have a 22 gigahertz LO that uh, we mix with the 28 gigahertz coming in. Then you've got the IF. And then as you come around the horn up to the top, then we have the, the uh, second IF and then the one gigahertz output. Then you see the shields over here on the right. But some of the vendors that we've used with off-the-shelf parts are analog devices, Avago, mini circuits, uh, Marky Microwave, and Corvo. So I want to talk to you about, about some of the, uh, well, first I want to just talk a little bit about X microwave. Uh, this is a rapid prototyping system uh, to 50 gigahertz and so the best way to describe it it's like RF Legos right so you can move these things around uh, the the launches uh, and the connections are at particular points on the grid there's a uh, in the bottom center there you can see a coplanar transmission line that you can turn upside down and that's what's used to connect the the RF blocks. And so it makes it very easy to go ahead and build some of these. You can even move them into uh, 
its own packaging. You don't have to be on the plate. Uh, you, you can have an external box. And so it makes it very easy to debug. And there's lots of component vendors that are now building uh, their prototype boards that fit on this particular grid. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the simulation results uh, that we did. Uh, this is 16 QAM. What you see on the left is our VSA software and, and the, uh, the measured results. And uh, th uh, we're in the linear range, so we're at minus 50 dBm. We have 25 mega samples per second, so it's a fairly wide band. And, um, and that's what you see on the left. And on the right is EVM estimation on a level diagram. So uh, this is unique uh, technology that we have, a patent pending technology, where we can actually show you the contributions of EVM along the chain. And we can even break it down into noise, the contributions due to uh, thermal noise, intermods, phase noise, um, and intermods. And we can show you the total here. And so what you're seeing here is the orange line is channel flatness. And the red line is the total. And so the measured results were 1.8%. And the estimated are, is 2.2. Now, the nice thing about the EVM estimation is it's very fast. You don't need to run other software. It's all built in. It's all native in the particular product. So now let's go a little bit uh, lower in power. So we've, we've dropped this uh, by 25 dB. We're now at minus 75 dBm. And as you would expect, the noise dominates the EVM. And that's what the blue line is. The red line, again, is the total. And then the channel flatness is still the channel flatness. And, uh, and I know you probably can't see it. Uh, the blue circle there is the measured results. And in this particular case, it's 17.9 percent EVM and the estimated is 16.3 so once again pretty close uh, we can also do simulation of the actual time domain response the the other response that I was showing you the estimation is all done in the frequency domain but this is time domain we can do this type of uh, simulation but here's some of the results as we look at the po different power levels of this QAM signal you'll see the measured results uh, with the VSA software and actually the estimated results. And they're uh, very close. And this is a very fast technique. Now, you'll notice that I've been talking about a receiver and really haven't been talking about BER. Uh, BER has uh, several challenges. You, you have to be able to synchronize the input bits and the output bits. It's harder to configure. It takes longer to simulate. Uh, and so there is a strong correlation between EVM and BER. And so um, what we find is uh, many customers are using EVM in the initial design phases. And then when they get the final product, then they'll use BER when they have the whole system set up. But this allows you to look at the estimation. We use EVM to do BER estimation. And here we've dropped the power by 3 dB. And we're about 13 dB signal to noise ratio. And, that's, and so we can see that on a level diagram also. All right. So I want to shift gears here a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about the Internet of Things. Uh, this particular graph shows a lot of the emerging standards that are, that are coming out. Uh, you know, There's different data rates, different frequencies for all of these things. Uh, there's been uh, some surveys done and estimations that by 2025, there will be over 30 billion connected devices. Um, so, so that's a lot of devices that we need to manage. And uh, there's lots of different frequencies for all these different standards. And so this just kind of gives you an example of some of these. There's sub gigahertz. Uh, band uh, bands, and then there's above a gigahertz. And this, once again, is just kind of showing you, uh, let's see, I skipped a slide here. Whoops. Well, anyway, uh, this uh, above two, 
and a half gigahertz, generally it's very short range, low power applications. So, oh, and then here's the, uh, uh, the one gigahertz. This is generally longer range, still low power, but maybe something like meter reading, uh, utility meter reading. So here's some of the products or examples of things that, that people will be building or are building. Maybe your companies are doing that. And so some of the challenges are is you have the chipset and then the antenna and then there's always matching in between. And uh, these are some of the basic things that we learn in school but it, you know it can take some time and especially if you have a higher power application where uh, you have a, uh, the chip and then maybe an amplifier and then an antenna. These two matching networks will interact with each other. And how do you design those? Well, we have a way that's very quick and very fast. It's an automated process. Uh, so what you do is you define the frequency band on the left and then you define the topology. So it could be maybe the S parameters for the chip, then a matching network, uh, and then maybe the amplifier device, another matching network, and then the antenna. And it will automatically synthesize in seconds the whole matching network. It'll synthesize it and you can optimize it. Uh, in this particular example, you see it at the bottom. This was done in less than an hour from the, the design to layout. So in summary, uh, if we can use, leverage the parts that exist and use rapid prototyping systems like this with S parameters, X parameters, and now key site sys parameters, you can get faster uh, answers and more accurate answers. Um, and then if you can do automated matching of these networks, it can save a lot of time and you can get to market quicker. Uh, and I know that this has just been a short period of time, and so if you're interested in more information, please come see us at the booth over here. And then we have a workshop uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock uh, to talk more about both of these applications. Thank you. Uh, is there any questions? Any questions? Uh, okay, the question is, we all know about S parameters, and you were talking about X parameters. Yes. Um, how new is this uh, X parameters, and how it is used in the simulation and the measurement? Uh, X parameters have been around for a couple of years. Uh, we have a PNA X uh, instrument that can actually extract the X parameters, or, or ADS can extract the, S or the X parameters and you can just drag and drop them in the simulator. We actually have libraries of X parameter parts that you can use. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, and as a reminder, don't forget to pick up